Hello everyone, Martin here, back with another Legacy video. Today, not playing Doomsday. Um, I am still playing Doomsday, and I will keep making Doomsday content. Uh, this channel is not turning into a variety channel as such, um, but I thought it would be fun to to play a deck that I've been uh, having some fun with lately, which is this Grixis Control List. Um, I first became aware of... Uh, this like this version of Grixis Control watching one of Brian Cole's videos, uh, Bosch and Roll. Uh probably probably like uh, a couple of weeks ago maybe. And um it basically has come up because of uh, the printing of this card. Hidetsuku consumes all. So this is a saga and uh the first two chapters, especially the first one is really good. Um, you get to destroy each non-land permanent with ma mana value one or less, so that's like uh, all your Delvers, Dragon's Race Channelers, a lot of stuff out of Elves, a lot of uh, like grindstones, a lot of artifact construct tokens, and all that so sort of stuff. So that's really good. Then it exiles Graveyards, which is like against Graveyard combo decks, this would then be on turn four if you went on curve, and that's obviously way too late. But it's not without relevance. Sometimes it'll be fast enough to to set back Delver casting Murktide Regent. Uh, sometimes it can really mess up Uro, so that's good. And then finally, the third chapter is it leaves behind a 3-3 Trampler that gets plus one, plus one whenever it deals damage. And then it has... Something that I don't think will ever come up, which is if it deals 10 or more damage to a player uh, in a turn, they, they lose the game. Anyways, this has sort of been the reason why people have started playing Grixis Control again. And I don't know, it's just, it's a fun it's a fun deck. It has the uh, Narsed, oops, Hull Breacher and Days Undoing combo, which is just like, it's seven cards. And out of those seven cards, only really the Days Undoing is kind of a bad card in, in its own right. Whereas Halt Breacher is a decent legacy power level card, I think. And Narset is a good power level card. Like, you'd be fine having Narset in any control deck in a lot of situations. A couple of Jaces. Um, the one thing that's not as good as Jeskai is the removal, because we don't get Source of Plowshares and Prismatic Ending. So I'm running three bolts, uh, and then one sudden egg in the main, and one the sideboard, and then a, a single fatal push. So sort of five main deck uh, single target answers. This doesn't target, but single, single like one for one uh, removal spells. And then like Hidetsuko also does a lot of removal uh, duty a lot of the time, which is great. And in terms of like uh like Merktide Regent and stuff, um Merit Lage and whatever, uh, Jace also is pseudo removal, so but anyways I'm gonna go ahead and play a league and um yeah we'll we'll see how we go. And if you don't enjoy me playing anything besides Doomsday, feel free to let me know. I'd I'd be happy to to, to learn that. And if you feel like something like this is fine every once in a while and you wouldn't mind seeing me play some other decks every every now and again. Uh, yeah, go ahead and let me know in the comments. All right, round number one on the play. Uh, and this is a mulligan, no lands. Yeah, we'll keep this. So, uh, I think I will send Jace to the bottom. Obviously, if we're up against a cre uh, sorry a, a combo deck, um, sudden edict is kind of useless. But then again, you know, the four mana planeswalker probably won't cut it versus comboing um, either, so. Okay. So if we can get to turn three, this ought to be decent. And I think I'll be spending my next turn uh, edict, the edicting emery. And I think I will... I will actually brainstorm here because I really want to find the third land, but I also really want to be tapping out next turn and being able to tap out on curve on turn three. So if we miss on land here, it's kind of bad, but we fortunately did not. 
Um, yeah, and we'll be drawing both of these cards, so... Well, we don't have to, but I think I kind of want to. Or at least I'll be drawing Jace. Uh, do we want to draw Expressive Iteration? Um, good question, good question. I think we do. All right, so let's get rid of Emery. So right now, Mox Opal doesn't have Metalcraft, and next turn we get to uh, destroy it with Hidetsuku. Uh, um, you know, unless they have uh, a way to, to answer that, of course. I think they play Force of Will. Oh, Shadow Sphere. Thoughtcast, okay. That's kind of scary. But, um... I think I will cast the Hidetsugu and just hope they uh, they don't have a force. And if they do, it's a two for one. At least we'll undo some of this the damage um, done by this uh, this thought cast. Okay, they had the force. That's fine. Um, so we'll see what they do here next turn. It, I think, well, if we draw land, we can slam Jace. Uh, so what's this? Chalice for one. Okay. That doesn't really concern me right now. Oh, another heated Suku. Okay, sweet. So they don't have second force. Okay, we get to three, like, snipe through their permanents. Okay. I think I... Ooh, another one. I'll save that. I think it's time for Narset, honestly. I wouldn't mind, like, Narsetting into a Force of Will. Oh, whiff on the Narset. Brutal. All right. Yeah, okay. There's no way back for them um, on that one. So we did not get unfortunate. We drew all three of our Hidetsukus in that, in that game, but um, Hidetsuku pulling its weight here. Okay, so we obviously want the Meltdowns. We want the Energy Flux. Pyroblasts are good, I think. They're kind of not so good versus... Um, Versus Chalice, but they do like counter Cap Kappa Cannoneer coming down, counters their forces and their like Emery's and, and whatnot. So I, I I have seven cards I'm interested in. I, I like Blood Moon is not bad, but I don't know. Like it kills their sagas, which is great, and turns off all their artifact lands, but they do have islands. And like Chrome Mox and stuff like that. Oh, sorry, Chrome Mox Opal. I don't know. Like if I f if I'm able to find nine cards to remove, I I'll bring in the two uh, Blood Moons. I think. But what don't we want here? Hmm. So I think like Fatal Push can go. It was very nice to be able to kill. Um, what's her face? Um, okay, actually, no, we also want the Sudden Edict, I think. Yeah, Edicts are, were, were good. Spell Pierce on the draw, probably not good enough because of Chalice. I don't think Belfo Strix is very good in this matchup. Although, like, getting in the way of a, of a Construct is nice, but hopefully we can handle the Constructs otherwise. I also don't think Thought Seizes are very good. So what's better to bring back in? Is it the push or maybe I'll try a Blood Moon? I haven't really tried Blood Moon against this. Oops, I'm at 61. No, and I submitted. What? I thought I went to 59. Oh, never mind. 61 cards it is. Yeah, we just aren't supposed to bring in the Blood Moon then, I guess. I, I don't know. I got 
just blindsided by my own, uh, like, I, yeah, I thought I, I had 59, and then, anyways, it's all good. Okay, keeping this hand, I have to force this chalice. Oh, it's not a chalice. What's this? War 2. And doesn't get blown up by Hidetsuku. And gets big pretty quickly. Okay, well, I'm, I'm not going to force this, and we'll see if it ends up being the death of me, but I do have the meltdowns and um, energy flux to to sort of deal with this. Let's find some lands. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a land, and we have Brainstorm. I'm a little bit concerned about this, uh, though, to be honest. We also don't have, like, uh, Baleful Strix, which would be a good card against this. And a second one. Okay. So we're getting to a point where it's like we have to find Meltdown, I think. Yeah. I'll um I'll pyroblast Emery. So they don't have any Serum Man artifacts or they would have cast them before attacking. Um I think I just we take her out right now. If they have force, we'll force back. I think if they have force, they will force now because doesn't seem like they're doing a whole lot else, but I could be wrong. I guess they could also have, like, a Kappa and be trying to... They're one mana short of casting that. A third one? Jeez, okay. I mean, getting close to, to like, Meltdown or Bust, I think. Okay, I'm taking five now, and next turn I'll take six more if nothing else happens. Potentially nine if they have another artifact. Okay. Brain Brainstorm needs to, to deliver here. Please don't have Flusterstorm. Okay. Brain Brainstorm kind of doesn't deliver, but... Mm. I think I'm okay going like this. And then I actually will cast Expressive Iteration now as sort of just a cantrip looking for um, looking for Meltdown. So this is cart, this is just cart neut neutra <laughs> neutrality. I don't know, that's probably not, not a word. No, Flusterstorm, Spell Pierce. You know what? I think I am going to fight over this. We need we need to find meltdown like right away. Okay. Guess not. That's n neither of those are meltdowns. Um I guess brainstorm and we'll exile Narset. Um, okay. Didn't find an artifact or a land. That's scary. Hopefully it's not a spell pierce or fluster storm. Okay, so we find found the land. So if brainstorm hits um hits meltdown, uh and it does. Wow. It's a big game. So hopefully they don't have Flusterstorm or Spell Pierce, or we're we're sort of out. But um, let's go like this. Okay. What's this? One man, uh, Emery. Okay. So that means they get to replay their automatons. Mm. So if I make a heated Suku now, it's their turn, then they play a patchwork automaton, then I get the turn and we nuke the graveyard. They get the turn, they attack me for one or two, and then I have a three three. I think I think I like that. I think I now regret not um, 
not like putting brainstorm on top instead of narset in case I need to cast it. But yep, they cast their automaton, and if they have an artifact in their hand, that's a little bit scary. Hidetsuku nukes the graveyards. What do we do here? I think we cast an R set. Oh, some those are some good cards. Jeez. Oh, I, I just I want all of these. Uh or at least both the blood moon and the bolt. So question, like, if we bolt the automaton, Emery can just keep replaying it. So I think we have to bolt Emery. And then hopefully Brainstorm and or Narset can find a way to deal with the automaton afterwards. And anyways, like, next turn, Hidetsuku will be a 3-3 three, three at least. They are also like capable of drawing some pretty, uh, like some bomb, bomby cards. Do they go after me or Narset here? I wonder. Okay, they go after Narset. That's fair. So they get to see what we draw. Hole Preacher is not the worst. Just as like a flash threat. Yeah, I think this is fine. I don't know, maybe I'm supposed to Ooh, that's kind of scary. Okay, so this can... Still equip this, right? If I flash in Hole Breacher and double block, we kill their automaton, but we lose both of ours. But I think we might actually just have to do that. Actually, no, as it is, we don't lose both. It'll be a 4-4, and we will have, like, 5 power, or 5 toughness. They also have 2 cards that they aren't casting, so that might be, like, spells, like Force of Will and Blue Card. I suppose they could also just not attack, but yeah, I don't know. Is there a world where you don't attack if you're them here? No, oh, okay. So they're thirty nine. Uh, sorry, they have thirty nine cards left, and so far we've not seen the force of will. I kind of think they're sitting on force. Let's see. Okay, guess not. So which creature do they kill here? Wow, okay. I actually thought they would kill uh, the Hidetsugu because... Well, yeah. Like maybe they're just too scared of like days undoing, but we already have an R set, so Okay, and now I'll attack for four and next turn for five and so on and so forth. Uh 
Oh, that's good. That can pick up, like, Psy can pick up the, the Shadow Spear, but also, like, if he starts, if they start making, like, uh, Thopter tokens. Let's see here. If Psy equips, this becomes a two, like, it deals two to me. And I can get in the way of with Hulk Breacher. Yeah, I don't know. Who's winning this race right now? Come on, like it's this this is a five five right now. Interesting. Well they're considering something here. I don't know what it is. We have to shuffle here, I think, because we're drawing another land, which is not really what I'm in the market for. Um, even though going to, like, every life point uh, right now is pretty massive. If, if they can somehow make two Thopters, I think that just beats us. Because then, next, like, at least then we can't fetch... Uh, which is not so good. Okay, never mind. Let's flash in the hull breacher. Uh, let's fetch, not keep. And let's draw something good here. That's not really it. Okay, Hidetsuku attacks, tramples over Sai if they choose to block. They choose not to block. Interesting. So now, like, they can't really tap Ancient Tomb that well. Because then they're at one, and, like, I'm representing lethal trample damage. Wow, I think like, I think this deck, because of Hidetsuku and like the options to bring in, uh, the options to bring in Meltdown and whatnot, mean that this is a really strong. This has like a lot going on, versus the this artifact deck here. But even though that is the case they really have run us very close here so i have to make up my mind if i'm gonna block here i think like it's better dropping to one and then having the extra attacker they'll they'll be at three but we'll be swinging in with like way beyond lethal here i'm not sure how they get out of this okay and they don't they concede cool yeah so i was just saying like i think I do think this this Grixis control deck is really very well set up to to fight this eight cast deck, but even though I think that's true, these especially these patchwork automatons being able to play around or get get over uh, the Hidetsuku that's that's pretty big game, and they ran us really close. We definitely had to find that that meltdown. Um, all right, on to round number two. All right, round number two on the play once more. Let's go. Uh, yeah, it's single mountain here. We have to mulligan this. Uh, this is not very good, but I think I will keep this. Um, yeah, let's mulligan this bottom of the mountain. And let's pass. Hope we don't get thought seized. Opponent kept a uh, seven card hand. Uh oh. Are we getting comboed out? What do they imprint on this here chrome box? 
Right now I'm only like it's either a stompy deck or it's like uh like uh oops all spells. Okay, so this is a stompy deck. Is this chalice for one? That'd be kinda bad. Yep. Alright. <laughs> oh boy. Well, I mean, a Hidetsuku would be nice here. That kind of undo undoes all that. Also kind of tempted to just like Days Undoing next turn if nothing incredibly scary happens here. Which, you know, something incredibly scary could very well happen. Trinsphere, okay. Doesn't really change our outlook right now that much. Ugh, come on. Okay, so like let's let's weigh up the pros and cons here. If we cast Days Undoing, like right now we because of these two ponders, we're on an effective three card hand, and so are they. Um, but their board is a lot more material than ours is. Our three card hand, though, is land, land, days undoing. No, I think I, I think I will pass. I'm too scared of like giving them all gas. On a, doesn't even matter if I draw counter spells because Trinisphere makes it so I can't cast anything on their turn. Though I do feel like the alternative, yeah, okay, so now they have a 4-3. So now I'm definitely not doing it. Yeah, it's not so good here. I mean, Narset is good. Narset is pretty good, right? Like, Narset means if we don't, if we don't activate her, we at least get, like, seven fresh cards. And, um, and they will have one. It would have been pretty big if, if, like, here is is a point where like, the difference between between Narset and Hull Breacher is particularly like evident because, Trinisphere means having like seven treasure tokens would be pretty insane. But let's see here, we might not get to do it. They might be able to kill her. Yeah, this deals four damage to target creature. Okay. Okay. But I mean, this is also pretty big bad news for us. Now they have this terrible, terribly scary uh, Planeswalker. I take two. And I can't even be bothered to read all this stuff. Okay, so they chose not to cast. They plus one her to exalt a card, and it, they didn't cast it. They dealt us two. So they can mana ramp, they can deal four to a creature, or they can... You get an emblem with whenever you cast a spell, it deals five damage to a target. Sure. Okay. I mean, yeah, right? Uh... Thing we just uh, why is this exile still? They can't cast it anymore, right? Can be played, but it says you may cast that card. If you don't, it deals two damage. And I was just dealt two damage, so why is this still here? Yeah, whatever. Okay. I mean, they can deal. They can down ticker to kill our Strixes, but. I don't think that's that good. Okay, this is scary. Do they have mana to cast this? It's Fury. It costs cost five, right? They have four right now. They have a card in hand. If that's a land... I don't know. Did they play a land? Yeah, they played a land. Okay. So they... Choose not to cast Fury, and I get dunked by... Uh, like, pinged by with two. And now I guess R said, no, they just, they, okay, they're going uh, for the head, which makes sense. Okay, so. Yeah. 
and let's go like this. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to keep up force here, but like I do feel like we need they can kill one of these and then attack through, so I do think we need to at least keep one around. But they're just going for it here. They exile land, ping us for two. And I don't really have an answer for this. They can just keep like dealing me two every turn. That means we're on a, a four turn clock here. So I don't think I don't think I have an answer for this, right? Hmm. Let's iterate here. Put that in our hand. That in exile. Sorry, that in exile. But, um... So let's see here. Attack her for one. She drops to six. She goes back up to seven. Flash in this attack her for um, four, down to three. I'm at five. Then she goes back up to four. I'm down to three. She goes, but that's sort of dependent on them attacking. We need them to attack with this, this thing here. I'll discard a Narset. I think I am going to be losing this, unfortunately, but yeah, we'll see. Yep, take two. What's this? Rabble Master. Uh... Ah, <laughs> this is no good. This um, kind of ruins our plan here. Because it shaves a tr uh, like a turn off the clock. And also they're not attacking. Uh, and we can't even fatal push this without taking two damage, which is rude. Yeah, I think it's over. We can't really, like, this This deck doesn't really have a, a way to answer something like a resolve Chandra. You could be playing, like, um, Brazen Borrower, but we, we just can't let that resolve is, I think, uh, the, the truth. I think Meltdown is probably decent. I think... Plague Engineer is also somewhat reasonable. I think Thought Seize is pretty bad. I think... Uh, I mean, it would have been good here to have Sunnedic to, to take out that um, the, the, the giant there, but a lot of the time I think they'll, they'll have like some goblin tokens or something. I think Belfastrix was like reasonable there, right? But we just... I think maybe, actually, Lightning Bolt is not good. Although, that was the one, one card I didn't remember we had access to in terms of, like, dealing with that with that creature. And uh, the, the Planeswalker. We could have, like... Trinistru made it hard, but we could... Like, Lightning Bolt could have done something to offset the, the that power struggle. But we'll see here. I think the Meltdown is, like, we'll probably get a hand with Meltdown here, keep it, and then they won't play an artifact, but we'll play, like, enchantments and creatures. But, yeah, I think I am going to keep this. And I am going to... I'm going to play Delta to be able to, to, like, fetch Basic Island in case they go, like, turn one Blood Moon so that we have, of course, like, a, a way to, to sort of play the game. Mulligan to six. 
if they just have like an insane banger hand here, then it's gonna be really hard for us. If they only like what I really don't want to see here is Rabble Master. Okay, nothing. Interesting. Okay. Alright, I think I'm going to play out the Strix. Get some presents on the board and like draw a card seems decent. I would have liked to have drawn a force effect there, but this will also have to do. Okay, this is like three mana, that's their wheelhouse. They got Blood Moon, okay. It means we will have to find one of our remaining two basic islands to cast Evercast Jace, but I am fairly pleased with uh, how we were able to play sort of around the Blood Moon. Mm, so do we want to Ponder here or Baleful Strix? I think we want to Ponder. I really want to find that second island or a Force of Will. Neither of those cards work. Oh, islands. Sweet. Uh, yeah, let's just play it out and cast another Strix, eh? Hey? Don't have Chandra, please. Oh, well, never mind. They can't have Chandra. Okay, so this is uh, one of those make a lot of goblins uh, thingies. I think I will take the one damage and um, hmm. We can slam Jace and bounce like a goblin token. We can iterate, hoping to find like a plague engineer. I think I actually like that. Okay, we find a force. We can like put another force into our deck and then we can exile in our set. So that's obviously not, not the greatest thing, but um, Sun Edict, problem is they'll have two tokens next turn. They'll attack with both, both, and I would, would have to like double trade to then, yeah, no, I don't think so. Let's shuffle these, get a whole Breacher, which is fine. Whole Breacher can like eat, like flash in and eat one of these when this creature attacks. Yeah, so they have to attack with this guy. Gosh. Like, Meltdown answers this in theory, but it means losing both of our Strixes. So I think I will actually force this. That's really, that's a problem because that's a force of will that was supposed to go somewhere else, right? Ooh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. How about that? Uh... How about Goblin? Yeah, no. Let's attack with both and hope that they don't have, like... I guess, actually, that was maybe a punt. They probably have, like, a Fury or something. Or some way to kill this. At least that's what I, I would be worried about. Okay. Yeah. This deals four to... Okay, had two. Interesting. It's also pretty scary. Ooh, stomping this out. Okay. It's four damage to our creature. 
one. Okay. Yeah, I kind of regret having attacked with my two Strix. Hmm. So this deals this on target credit attacking creature with less powers. So the okay, yeah. No. I think um I think I will just pass here and uh flash in hold breacher. But this is not looking good. So they're adding mana, okay. Oof. Yeah, I think that just, that was game. Yikes. Yep. All right, so they get to attack in with two two twos, and we will attempt to trade with the war boss. But I mean, honestly, this race has is lost. We'll t drop to six, and they they have lethal, um, and then some. So I'm not really sure what gets us out of this. So let's uh let's brainstorm here like a couple of lightning bolts but i did board one out i believe yeah battle streaks we can't cast okay ggs let's move on to round number three all right round number three on the play once more Giddy up. Yeah, let's keep this. It's sort of a medium medium hand, I think. As long as we're not sort of up against combo, or like at least turn one combo, then um, I feel sort of decent-ish about this. Yeah, let's, uh, let's pass here. It's funny, I, like in those situations, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to, because I do kind of feel like brainstorming before I get my next turn. And if that's the case, maybe I should have just brainstormed on my own turn in case I hit like a thought seize or something. But, um, okay, they seem like they want to be doing something here. Okay. Double fetch. Is this the mirror, maybe? Could very well be. Yes, I was just saying to myself, I would like to hit a force effect here. Because I, I really want to slam Narset. Um, which actually means I probably want to draw the third force. Um, so, okay, let's not play around Wasteland here. Let's get one of each of these. So they have to force this. I'm, I'm assuming they have one in their seven cards that's a pitchable counter spell of some sort. If this is indeed the mirror, it could also be like Grixis Doomsday. But I don't know that there are anyone playing um, something along those lines. So, okay, so they force pitch force. I think we do the same. I think maybe the Strix, like the Strix gives us options. Okay, and she's in, and let's get the card right away. 
Uh, let's draw Force of Will. We could have drawn Bolt, but we have Sudden Edict. If they have Strix here, they don't get to draw a card, and I get to Strix... Uh, and in any case, like, like this attack means that we get one less card, one fewer cards out of Narset, which is like also a kind of card advantage. But would you look at that? I don't think I'm getting away mind twisting my opponent for four cards and like drawing what would be two, I guess. Main deck Pyroblast. Okay, I'm gonna force. Hope they don't have like another force. And they don't. Okay. Yeah, that's that's good. That's like that's excellent. Yeah, and they concede. All right. I mean, that's like a way to illustrate what it means having like basically an A plus B combo in your control deck that only takes up like a minimal space. And like I was saying during the deck tech. It, it really is only Days Undoing that is actually only a combo card, right? Like, if, if Days Undoing had never been printed, you could argue having the three Narset, I would say, for sure. And you could make a little bit of a lesser argument about having the, um, having the two Hall Breachers, but it would still, like, it would hold up. You could argue having, like, one or two. So it's basically just adding like two cards that give you the potential to just like have this A plus B knockout combo. Okay, so for the mirror, uh, we want pi uh, like the red blasts. We may want the engineers on their Strixes. I'm not sure about that. And I don't know that we want Sudden Edict. I don't think we want... Like, I think the Hidetsukus are pretty bad. Um, honestly, I think they're actually, they just shouldn't be in the deck. Uh, in the exact mirror. Because I don't think, it, it, they don't hit anything on one. The mirror doesn't care about the graveyard. So, like, having a suspend four for black, red, one, that makes a three, three. Yeah, that's just not good enough. Um... I could also be persuaded to cut the Sudden Edict. Between the Red Blast and the Bolts, we have plenty to kill Hull Breacher with. So maybe Fatal Push can go. Um, what else? Maybe we shave like a Force of Negation. I think I like the singles and spell pierce. I, I actually really wanted to fit that in here, and I don't think I touched on it during the deck tech, but I think like the the worst card for this deck to face is a resolved Teferi uh time raveler. Like if, if opponent resolves Teferi, it's like very bad news. Let's keep this. Um so and it's also just like answers like it's good in the mirror it answers stuff like uh Sylvan library and whatever okay our hand has plenty of gas it has some protection what we really want is um it's just like lands now and i'd be very upset if i got like yeah uh so i think i will I'll go like this. I'll draw the land. I'll draw the spell pierce. It's then very awkward that we, we have to fetch away the force. No, that's not awkward, but the awkward part is we then have to blindly hope to draw a third land or I guess a cantrip. Looks like they're going to Strix. If they get basic swamp, it's either because they have blood moon or because they're respecting us bringing in Blood Moon. Okay, Strix is in. Okay. And let's pass here. You could argue that I should have 
like put four second from the top and not uh, pierce. That is certainly true if we want to tap out on turn three, but it's also it also means that we're like like falling farther behind on the on the card advantage train. Ooh, we get lucky. And yeah, I think we just um just pass here. If they go hull breacher, I'll force and so what do I pitch here? I probably pitch days undoing. No, maybe I pitch my own hull breacher actually. If they force back, we have the pierce, which would be nice. Or, you know, potentially very nice. Hopefully they do something that lets us pierce here because I I don't want to like just them not tapping anything and passing. It would be kind of awkward. Okay. We had whole breacher, we could have flashed it in, but I mean it's almost a certainty that they would have like a red blast or a force, I would say. Him to Torak. Okay, that's interesting. Let's uh, let's see here if they want to fight over this. Oof. So I think I am going to. Um, By the way, I'm fetching a volcanic because without the heated sukus, I think like um, the emphasis pivots more over to blue and red than to black. But I'm gonna play plague engineer here. If they want to force this, that's fine. And if not, at least we get to take out the bird, sort of cancel out uh, that card advantage they got from that. Uh, Okay, they have Narset. That's fine. I really want to draw a land here. They regular brainstorm. Okay, I really want to draw a land here. Yes, thank you. Because that lets me Narset and uh, Pyroblast. And if they don't force here, I can Pyroblast their Narset. Uh, force of Will, thank you very much. Suppose we could also just attack Narset. I think that's probably better. They can't get any more cards out of it, and we have like answers lined up for like Days Undoing or whatever it might be. And the brainstorm they just drew is a blank card, so that's also nice. As it stands, we will get to like double activate Narset, which they didn't. So yeah, things are things are finally no. I was gonna say that things were coming up Millhouse, but things are not coming up Millhouse. Okay, I'm not gonna fight over that. Dak Faden. I mean, hang on. So oh no no no. I was gonna say they can't draw cards, but they can make me draw cards, which I then won't. Um, but I'll have to discard so. Hang on. Counter target spell that's blue. Yep. Let's go like this. Now we have to see what we can get here. Let's activate Narset. Lightning Bolt. Yeah. This should be game over. Lightning Bolt, Narset. Cast Days Undoing. I have Force to back it up. Yep. All right, sweet. So the combo got there twice in the mirror. Um, interesting games, though. So they had him. I have not seen that. I understand. Like, this is a card that a lot of people that play Legacy have a sweet spot for, right? I just don't know about the black-black and, like, the random aspect. 
I, I, I guess it depends on what you're playing this instead of, right? Like, I think I, if it's instead of Thoughtseize, I'd rather have the the knowledge and, like, man advantage and all that stuff and the pinpoint accuracy of, of, of Thoughtseize. But this can definitely, like, just wreak havoc. All right, on to round number four. All right, on the draw for the first time in this league. Um, Yeah, I'll keep this. Uh, Anything but turn one combo... And I'm sort of okay with, uh, but let's see. Oh, this could mean a creature deck, and we have some nice creature removal here. Uh, dark Depths. Oof, okay. This I'm less excited to be playing against, but we will see. Okay, it's just like, uh, like, like turbo depths, like black, black green depths, no white splash. I've mostly been seeing like, like white depths, green white depths, I mean, um, it'll be interesting to see what they take here. Okay, they take the thought sees. Probably means they have like a crop rotation. I'm not sure what other thing they would protect that's not a creature, which Lightning Bolt gets, like which would be Elvish uh, Reclaimer. I suppose they could have like Vampire Hex Mage and then like Urborg, but that's at least a turn away then. Okay. So they did have one Urborg. Right, okay. Unfortunately, Hidetsugu does not say exile on the first chapter. That would have been sweet. Um, I think we just want to ponder here. They might crop rot now, in case if they're really... Yeah, I don't know. They're, we know one card of their three is Dark Depths. Let's assume the other one is crop rotation. So they crop rot into stage, I guess. And if their last card is on land, then that's just like one, two turns, go. Yeah, these bolts are definitely not looking very good right now. Our, oh, I think like maybe our plan is going to have to be resolve Strix. Hope they can't like get to Sejiri step, and then hope to like get enough of uh, like enough time. Yeah, they're crop rotting here. Yep. To like land a Jace and bounce Merit Lage, but that's uh, that's not going to be particularly easy. Uh, does the Hidetsuku matter here? They'll get to go Dark Depths. And then they're one mana away. We get the turn. I don't we can't afford to draw like two lands and a useless card. I would assume they got they're gonna plunk down the dark depths here. Yep. They could also just no, they can't have vampire hex mage here. They need another black mana. So if we're on the play here, we could at least like play Hidetsuku and kill the Mox Diamond before they get to the relevant turn. Oh jeez. All these lands. Okay, so we want to we see Jace here. Maybe not yet. We want to see Jace second from the top here, I guess, in case they have, like, a uh, discard spell. Come on. Don't play land. Or, like, at least... Yes! No land. 
Wow. Wow, that's actually, that's insane. Um, okay. I guess they could have, like, a spirit guide. Actually, yeah, that's probably... Well, they'd have to activate it now. Looks like they didn't. They could have two spirit guides. Is one damage worth it? I'm going to risk it for one damage. We might actually... It might end up mattering. If they have two spirit guides, so be it. Wow! Oh my goodness! They just got bricked on their draws. They must have just drawn, like, I don't know, discard spells and... Whatever. They have no colored mana now, so they couldn't even cast, like, a discard spell or a life from the loam or something. Crazy. Okay. Um, well, Blood Moon seems good. And maybe that's about it for stuff we have. I guess, no, Sudden Edict is also really good. We can cut a Fatal Push. And we can cut a Lightning Bolt. They are very likely to have... So, actually, let's wait a second. But they're very likely to have, like, Elvish uh, Reclaimer, I think. I don't think Discard is very appealing. I think the Strixes are fine. That's like one way that we get to time walk them until we can find like Jace or something. But obviously not amazing. But Sudden Edict now also, is it, you know, helps that play. So what do we shave? I think Hidetsugu is, is pretty good because, like I said, they play the, the Elvish Reclaimer. They play Mox Diamond on the draw. Obviously, obviously it's a bit slow, but as we just saw, we, you know, you can get lucky. I think I'll cut the last thought seize too. Is there anything I'm missing to bring in? Like, I don't think Surgical is good. I don't think Plague Engineer is good. I don't think, like, messing with their artifacts is good good enough. Because they only have the Mox Diamonds, at least that I'm aware of. But Um, I suppose I'll keep this. It's sort of a, a meh hand. They keep seven as well. I never know if I'm supposed to force, like, it seems so aggressive to, to blow two cards on once upon a time. But you just know that, like, every now and again, they kept a hand that was, like, no lands and only once upon a time. Or, I guess, like, I don't know, two Thespian stages, their only lands and no green sources, but... That's probably, it is pretty bad to go down a card. Okay, so they revealed Bloodstained Mire. So the way this deck here interacts with its opponent is that it just has like a metric ton of discard spells. So I'm assuming I'm going to get discarded here. It's either that or Elvish, Spirig uh, Elvish uh, Reclaimer. No, nothing. So I guess it's uh, crop rotation. No, not that either. It's very interesting. If, they, if it was crop rot, they would have had to cast it in my upkeep uh, to play around Force of Negation and not let me draw another card. Okay, I'm fairly ready to force something here. Thoughtseize. I'm not going to force that. They could Thoughtseize me. What do, you, what do you take here if you're them? Like, Belfast Strix is the only castable card for another few turns, but... Or at least, like, for next turn, I mean. Okay, so they take a force. I guess they could have, like, Surgical. That'd be kind of weird of them to bring in. Not super excited about, like, just drawing a lot of lands here. I'm not able to fetch Basic Island. Okay, what's this? Are they crop rotting here? Yeah, we have Blood Moon, so ideally we want to get to Basic Island. 
suppose I could also cast like uh, or fetch basic swamp. I think maybe that's actually worth it. I think like unless they play a basic land next turn. I think if we were to draw Blood Moon and play it on our next turn, that would be probably lights out. The only way it's not is if they have that Boseju um, card. Okay, that's kind of uninteresting. Uh, if they have the Boseju card and then they float green mana, but that would mean them not doing anything with their mana on their own turn, so I guess that's that would also be something. wonder what they're sitting on. Okay, there's Stage... Could be like choke maybe. I guess I have to force a will a choke if they try to choke us here. Yeah, I mean right now it's only one land, but I do think I have to uh, to choke uh, to force this choke. So now they know our defenses are down. Come on, Blood Moon. Okay. I mean, I'll Narset here and hopefully find a blue card for our force. I did not. I did find Blood Moon. Which is bad because we're sort of signaling that it's coming. They have another choke, then we will have to like bide our time one more turn. They could also just plunk down dark depths now, in which case I severely would have wished to have taken the sudden edict off the Narset instead of the Blood Moon. But um, yeah, they're p paying for something right now. So maybe not Merit Lage, but another choke. Yeah, okay. So that is, and ooh, there is the Dark Depths. Now we have to find a uh, Sudden Edict. Hmm. Well, let's, uh, let's draw here. Ooh, there was Sudden Edict. Never didn't have it. So now there's a bit of a cat cat and mouse thing going on here because if if we um like if we play Blood Moon next turn, then in response they can. I think that's actually still fine. We have this basic swamp to to like cast Sudden Edict afterwards. <clears throat> so yeah, like they cast Blood Moon. Ooh, this guy. Oh, man. We have to force this. No! Okay. But now we get to Sudden Edict. That will take away Elvish Reclaimer. And then we can Blood Moon and hopefully end the game, like, effectively. They could have, like, Force of Vigor green card, which would be kind of unfortunate. I was going to say, I, I could fetch Basic Island here, but uh, that's not going to, like, work with Choke. So it's better, I think, to get the Basic Mountain, um, and then... Yeah, I guess just take it from there. Well, let's see.
They have 13 turns as things stand right now. Thirteen turns and a lot of red mana. But, I mean, if they do play Force of Vigor, then I think they're pretty favored. And they could just end the game right now. Because I think I have to attack. I don't think I'm just going to be sitting here because I, I have so few options with between the Choke and the Blood Moon. Um, okay, no Force of Vigor. Yeah, Jace is not going to be coming down anytime soon. Like, uh, did I, I didn't, no, uh, Hidetsugu is probably among my best draws right now. Or I guess just like, I was going to say Force of Will, but we don't really have a lot of Force of Wills uh, left in the deck. Sudden Edict is very nice. Like, it's a, an insurance policy if they do get to, to Dark Depths. Wow, this is one of the weirder games I've played in a while, I'd have to say. Because I can play out like one of these lands. Also, if they do get rid of my Blood Moon, my, my blue duels are suddenly, like, turned on. Moment, at least for, for like, one, one turn or one activation under the choke. Is the Strix really going to go all the way? The Strix that could. Ooh, island! So, do we... Do we blow it right now on, like, a Ponder? I don't think so. We naturally wait to draw the second island, which is coming up right now, right? Uh, and play Jace. I mean, I, I assume they do have an out to this. Oh, yes. I mean, I'm not sure it's going to end up mattering now because by the time it's going to get online, Strix will have taken them down to two, I think. But um, <laughs> it's a spell I could cast, right? That does offer some attacking threat. Incidentally, this means they they can also like it's an enchantment, right? So they're um, the thing. Um, Force of Vigor would like now just be able to kill two enchantments instead of one. All right, I mean I'm. I, I feel uh, like uh, this is uh, this is very much within reach, right? Dark Confidant. Another Hidetsuku. I think I'm not going to play this because it likely won't matter. And um, I don't want to tap my black mana source in case somehow it becomes relevant that I need to suddenly it before I get the turn again. Probably won't, but you never know. Moment of truth. Well, sir, ma'am, what will it be? All right. Sweet, we got there. They conceded. 
So yeah, three and one. Let's go for. Uh, let's see if we can get a get a four and one, or uh, if we have to settle for a three and two. Let's go for round number five. All right, on the play for round number five. Yeah, good hand, I would say. I think I'm okay, like pondering on turn one. That's the only sort of decision to be made here. I'm putting them all against the six. Yep. All right. I think I am going to like go island ponder here. Uh, yeah. I mean, why not? See what we're up against. Badlands. Okay, so likely reanimator. Okay, dark ritual. Veil of Summer. How about no Scott? Okay, so maybe not reanimator, so it's like Tess. It's Ant. Yeah, about that. So they're they're right now considering if they should just concede or keep playing. Um, I'm gonna draw this brainstorm, and I will likely just f end of turn brain like f crack the fetch and then brainstorm. And I really would like to cast Narset. Uh, let's get an underground C here. Ugh, that's a little bit gross. At least the Strix lets us dig through it. But okay, they've seen enough. All right. Um, we got lucky and kept like kept a hand that was fortunately very good against a combo opponent. Maybe less so against like certain other types of decks. But let's see here. Um, this is Ant, so they're likely on Pass and Flames. So Surgical Extraction is like an option. Um, they were also like a, they likely have like, what's it called, um, Wish Claw Talismans, and like maybe one Meltdown is, is reasonable. They might have Empty the Warrens, but probably not. Um, and then we can always debate on whether or not the cantrips are good enough. So what's not that hot? So are the removal spells, first of all. Not very good. Um, Hidetsuku actually makes me feel like I don't need Plague Engineer. Hidetsuku is not that great. It's very, it's, it's like really slow. It is, it can be very good in certain sort of situations, but I, I think at least shaving one is probably fine. Maybe we should shave more than one. Um, we can shave one or two bolts. They are a deck that care about their their life total. So what if we go like, like this? Maybe the meltdown is a little bit of a of a stretch. Um, is there anything else here that could, like, Blood Moon is not the worst if they don't see it coming. But it's also at the same time not, like, they have Lotus Petal and probably, like, Chrome Mox and stuff. So it's not Lights Out. And it does sort of also hinder us a bit. Maybe two Hidetsukus is is sort of fine here. So go like this. Mm. Yeah. Like, Graph Digger's Cage, we bring in two Surgicals. Potato, potato kind of thing, I think. Obviously, Cage is like a permanent solution, but um, 
I don't know, maybe it's even a bit of a stretch bringing in Surgical. When I was playing a lot of Ant, I mean, Surgical could certainly get you, but it's... I think, actually, I do think Surgical is worse to play against than um, than Graph Digger's Cage, so... Okay, yeah, let's keep this. Uh, it's just only the one land, but we, we have a Force, um, which is not going to be enough, but should be enough on turn one. Okay, there we go, the Force of Will. Glad I didn't bring in uh, Blood Moon. What is this art? It's like a dinosaur? Interesting. Okay, so they gobble up our force. And let's ponder. Looking for another force. We didn't get there. Yeah, I don't like any of these cards. Belfast Strix is also something we could and probably should have shaved, but maybe for Pyroblasts uh, and Red Elemental Blast. I think the Blasts are just probably better than Strix. Okay, so Veil of Summer is represented. Okay, make your land drop and brainstorm. That, to me, signals that they're either playing like more casually with their brainstorms than I like, or that they're really close to comboing. But I suppose time will tell. Come on, let's draw something good here. Ugh. Oh boy. That was not very good. Um, hmm. So let's get rid of one of the lands and um tell you what why don't we put hull breacher on top here so in case they thought seizes they won't see it coming and um if they take a day's undoing for some reason we still have the backup the hull breacher i'm kind of worried i won't get another turn but I, in that case it didn't matter what we put back on top okay They go top bottom with the preordain. Come on, just discard me and pass. Thoughtseize, pass. They're also representing abrupt decay. I'm not sure that they would bring that in. Or like if they're even playing it. I'm not really up to date with ant lists. Okay. Looks like we get our turn, so that's amazing. And I suppose now they have to worry about why we didn't tap anything. And they could be on, like, um, they could be working on the assumption that we have, like, a force of negation. So Dress doesn't take Hull Breacher here. I, I think I am just going to fetch to be ready. And like, yeah, if they have, um, if they have another discard spell, then we won't get to Magical Christmas Land in Days Undoing. But if they don't, by the way, they're, they're set up right here. It doesn't look too good for them. So, okay. Dress resolves. I suppose you take... I mean, maybe you just pack it up here. I always found the art on this, like, really gnarly. Okay, so they took uh, one of the Days Undoings. So it makes me think they might go, like, they might have Land Discard or, like, Pedal Discard, take the other one. they take the other one, we still get the Hull Breacher, and then we can untap, and if we draw land, we can d Jace, which is, like, I feel that's pretty strong. And if not, we can... Yeah, I, I, like, Hidetsuku is not very good here. Um, oh, my. 
this is going to happen. They don't have black mana. I guess they could have, like, um, now they have black mana. So they could decay. They could also have, like, um, like a chain of vapor, I guess. Okay, so they brainstorm in response. Wise choice. So it's like, they find removal for Pulpiture or Yeah, okay, they didn't. So the combo got them. All right. I mean, that was that was good. Um, so that's four and one. Played some some good... Uh, played some, some cool matchups, I thought. Um, let me just get back to the deck list here. Yeah, I mean... We, we got pummeled by the... Uh, the the stompy deck I, and i i re seem to remember game one being like a little bit close but the fact that they got chandra online just was like really bad for us and game two didn't seem particularly close so maybe stompy yeah i don't know it doesn't seem like the most pleasant of matchups to be honest but then again i don't think it ever really does i i don't maybe i just don't play decks that line up well against stompy decks um we beat the combo. What, what did we face? We faced um, we faced eight cast, and we faced the mirror, and we faced Stompy, and then we faced the black green depths and ant. And I think uh, the deck performed really well. I it's not a deck I would want. To, I would feel good about facing if I was playing Doomsday. I think it's just in general, like, Grixis colors are really good against combo in most, like, versions of combo because you just get, like, if you have the tri triumvirate of, um, of, like, counter spells and discard, that's, like, that's two very strong axes on which to prey upon the combo decks. And a lot of the spell-based combo decks aren't very happy to be facing hull breacher effects, and you have, like, five and um and you have this this card that just incidentally like messes with different decks in different ways i like i'm i'm on 3 i i just don't think 4 is enough it's good enough like i think there are enough of matchups where this isn't very good that you don't want 4 but there are also enough of matchups where it's good to amazing to mean that you want more than certainly more than 1 probably like I, i've certainly been happy with three you could probably argue for two but yeah um yeah so anyways um thanks a lot for watching i will be back with some more legacy content probably doomsday uh is, is going to be in the next video and yeah let me know if um if there's anything you would want to be to to like to be different about the these videos or if there's any like like i said at the beginning um, I don't want this to be like a variety channel where I'm just like playing uh, like uh, all sorts of weird stuff. But I do occasionally like to play other decks than Doomsday. Like like this one, I've played Food Chain a lot. I've played other sorts of decks. And I definitely wouldn't mind if anyone has some sort of inspiration for me about what could be like fun to play. But I, I would also be very happy to hear if what you really just want is more Doomsday content. Um, and I'm, I'm definitely not sort of not making Doomsday content. Like I said, um, I, I have some, some Doomsday video projects lined up right now. And, and I, that's also just like, it is my, my deck of choice. If, if my weapon of choice, if I'm going to a, like to a tournament or whatever it is, it is Doomsday. So, uh, yeah, but yeah, with that, I'm going to bid you adieu and, um, stay safe and I'll be back. Bye-bye.